I would like to introduce our facilitator, um, Armani Wazwaz. She earned her doctorate from Loyola University. During her doctoral studies, her areas of expertise were uh, cultural studies and, um, and a 19th century and 20th century American literature in multicultural context. For her dissertation, she wrote about the role of the body in the pain in African American lit in the 20th century American literature. At Moraine, she teaches composition, American literature, African American literature, non-Western literature, and non-fiction creative writing. She has a great interest in African American literature, world literature, American literature, composition, creative writing, and visual arts. Her research interests center around the writings of Frederick Douglass. Fred Frederick Douglass. Uh, I would like to give uh, a clap for Armani Wazwaz. Right. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? Good. Great. Okay. These awesome students have been practicing for a very long time, and this afternoon they are going to be putting on very important monologues that capture the essence of important people in the African American community. They will go first, they will present these monologues, and I will follow up with questions for these amazing students. And after that, questions for the rest of you. So a round of applause for these students. On the 20th of January, 2009, I was elected 44th president of the United States of America and history was forever changed. I raised my right hand and placed it on the Bible of Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King Jr. That morning I was inaugurated the first African American president and held the highest office in the land. As a child of an African immigrant, my election stood as a symbol to the world. My name meaning blessing it was a reminder to children that they too can dream, that they too can become anything, even the president of this great country. After graduating college, I came to Chicago to work for a church-based organization on Chicago's South Side. Soon after this experience, I was admitted into Harvard's Law School where I graduated in honors and returned to Chicago to work in a law firm. Here, I met Michelle, the love of my life. It's a true partnership of respect and love. And I, <laughs> so in love with you. I couldn't, do, I couldn't have done anything I've done without her. She is just my rock. I count on her in so many ways every single day. She encouraged me to take a leap into politics and have faith in me. During Black History Month in 2005, I came to Moraine Valley and spoke to Moraine Valley students, staff, and community members. Just two years later, I announced my candidacy for president. Ultimately, I won presidency with the 53% of the popular vote and became the first African American president. I went. I went to serve two terms in office, made sweeping reforms to progress our nation, and of my biggest accomplishment, I helped make laws to combat discrimination and improve America's image abroad. I launched a stimulus package and ended the Iraq war, which helped end the Great Recession. Who am I? I am Barack Obama. <laughs> Obama out.
Many of my early years, many of my early years were spent living in a motel with my mother and five siblings. I was 13 years old when I discovered the gift that would change my life forever. I was sitting in the bleachers around a boys and girls club basketball court in Pedro, California, watching my brothers play ball when a teacher asked me to watch a ballet class instead. After that, I fell in love with dancing. I worked tirelessly to become an accomplished dancer and in 2000 became a member of the American Ballet Theater, one of the top companies in the world. I made history in the fall of 2014 when I became the first black woman to perform the lead role in Swan Lake in the company's inaugural tour to Australia. In June 2015, I became the principal dancer and the, um, and the first African American woman ever promoted to that elite position in the ballet's 75 year history. Since then, I've been featured on 60 Minutes, CBS Sunday Morning, The Today Show, and in magazines such as Vogue, Ebony, Essence, and People. I've had endorsements from prominent companies such as Under Armour, Oikos, and Seiko. I was inducted into the Boys and Girls Club National Hall of Fame in 2012 and named their National Youth of the Year Ambassador the following year. In 2014, President Barack Obama appointed me to the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. As a child, there were few prominent ballerinas of color I could admire. Now I'm that source of inspiration. Not only do I try to help promote the beautiful art of ballet to unrepresented populations, but also import the importance of embracing your own body image. In the ballet world, slender is the norm, and my muscular physique is not. It took me a while to understand that the classical ballet field is so much about what you look like, and also to accept that it's okay to be different. It's not about a diet or a fad or starving yourself to look a certain way, but becoming comfortable and accepting what your body is capable of. From my disadvantaged background in being African American to facing adversity for my body type, these obstacles have only helped me become the successful woman I am today. I am Misty Copeland. <laughs> I am the son of Bertie Baldwin and the stepson of David Baldwin. I was born in Harlem, New York City, 1924. I'm the oldest of nine children. At the age of 14, I became a preacher. I graduated DeWitt Clinton High School. At the high school, I decided to write magazines and some even my magazines got published. There is where I learned that I had a passion for writing. Looking at America, I noticed that there was a bunch of prejudice and anger. So I decided to go overseas to Europe. Spending my time in overseas after nine years, I came back to America and I saw that the social conditions for African Americans had worsened. In 1960, I noticed that there was violence in the South that had increased. My three great friends, civil rights marchers, Mega Evers, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and famous Muslim leader, Malcolm X, had all been assassinated. There, I grew angry. I used my pain and my struggle in the literature that I produced. So I decided to go back to France. Some of my greatest achievements as a writer, as a writer, I could uh, I could dissect the mind of the offended and the victim of being in a racist mindset. I spoke for all people, not just one group of people, but all. One of my greatest novels was Go Tell It on the Mountain. One of the plays that I produced was a play called The A-Man's Corner. In 1980, I died from stomach cancer, but I was buried in my home, Harlem. One of my last wishes was to see a, a collection of all my essays in one publication called The Price of the Ticket. I am James Baldwin.
I was born on August 26, 1918 in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. My mother was a teacher and father was a farmer and janitor. I enjoyed mathematics and could easily solve math mathematical equations. My father moved our family to Institute West Virginia so that my siblings and I could attend a better school. I attended West Virginia High School and graduated at the age of 14. I received my bachelor's of science degree in French and mathematics in 1932 at West Virginia State University at the age of 18. I, in 1940, I attended West Virginia University to, to obtain a graduate degree and was one of the first African Americans to enroll in the mathematics program. After college, I taught in elementary and high schools in West Virginia and Virginia. I began working in aeronautics as a computer in 1952, and after the formation of NASA, I performed the calculations that sent astronauts into orbit in the 1960s. I recognized the pervading presence of the racial gender barriers, but I chose to ignore them. I was asked to be included in editorial meetings, even though I was aware women were never permitted to do so. On one occasion, when a question arose that a man could not answer, they had no choice but to refer to me, a woman. My calculations were critical to the success of these missions, especially for Alan Shepard and John Glenn. For over 35 years, I have been known for my accuracy in computerized celestial navigation. Much of the technical work at NASA and my membership at the National Advisory Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. I retired from NASA in 1986, which led to five NASA Special Achievement Awards. An Apollo Group Achievement Award for getting not one, get for getting one of only 300 flags onto the moon and on board Apollo 11. And further team award for pioneering work in navigation. Up until 2008, I was still involved in math and tutoring youngsters. I will always tell youngsters, do what you love and you'll do your best at it. I am Katherine Johnson. Baby love, my baby love, I need you, oh how I need you. Baby love, where did our love go? You keep me hanging on and stop in the name of love. These are just a few of our Billboard hot number one singles as one of the most successful acts of Motown. Who are we? We are the Supremes. We, Lawrence Ballard, Mary Wilson, Diana Ross. We came from the Brewster Douglas Public Housing Project in Detroit, Michigan, and formed the Primates. After singing with Motown, we became a trio of Ross, Ballard, and myself, Wilson, and birthed the Supremes during the 1960s. As the Supremes, we became international stars, toured the world, and even recorded for and appealed in motion colored pictures. Then in 1969, I, Diana Ross, left the group to begin my solo career. I was replaced, and the Supreme still continued to have success in top record hits. In 1983, we were reunited in Motown's 25 TV special. In 1988, we were graciously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was quoted by our most faithful member, Mary Wilson, that the Supremes, throughout our long and successful history, have been blessed with loyal and devoted fans. Our legacy lives on as the Billboard's top girl group of all time. Stop in the name of love <laughs> before you break my heart. Stop in the name of love before you break my heart. Thinking over, we are the Supremes. Thank you. A round of applause to all the students, please. All the students. I would like now to ask them questions so that we can get to know them more. I'd like for you all to introduce yourselves, your name, major, 
and semester at Moraine. My name is Lindell Johnson. Uh, my major is mass communication, and this is my last semester at Marine. My name is Tayana Johnson. Um, my major is psychology, and this is also my last semester at Marine. My name is Kenneth Richardson. Uh, this is my last semester at Marine, and I'm getting a major in com mass communications. My name is Jasmine Wooten. This is my second semester at Marine, and my co my <laughs> Um, <laughs> my major is mass communication. My name is Brianna Hedrick. This is my fourth semester and I'm majoring in advertising. My name is Chantrelle Gagné. This is my second semester at Marine and my major is psychology. I am Mia Robinson. This is my first semester here and I'm majoring in English. Awesome. Hey. I'm good. Hey. Thank you so much. The second question, how did it feel to play this character? How did it feel to play this character? To play Barack, it was a little um, intimidating at first, but after practicing with these guys, I got comfortable more and more every day. Um, to play the role of Katherine Johnson, I initially uh, didn't realize what actually an honor it was until I actually did a little bit more research and watched the movie, uh, Hidden Figures, in reference to her character. And um, yeah, I, I feel very honored and I feel very happy that they chose me to play her because I could see a lot of uh, traits that I would see in myself in that character. Uh, to play James Baldwin uh, was actually an honor because um, I didn't know anything about him, but uh, me preparing for this role and like uh, getting information, I learned a lot about different things that he accomplished in his lifetime. Seeing Florence of one of the Supremes um, was a great experience. It helped me learn like, you know, to build confidence because she was a strong lady. Um, for me to play Diana, as one of the Supremes, I felt like it was a great honor because, you know, she was the forefront of the Supremes. So it was a different experience. Um, playing Mary Wilson um, was a great experience because I'm actually an artist and it puts me in her shoes. Playing Misty was very close to home because I am a dance teacher. So it was like she said, um, she's a source of inspiration. So she was definitely that for me as well. Right, beautiful and inspiring answers. The third one, third question. What reactions did you experience when playing your character? And I'll repeat. What reactions did you experience when playing your character? Yeah, I was outside the L building and I got mixed reactions. Uh, a couple people stopped and stared. Uh, a couple people actually shook my hand like I was Barack, that was pretty cool. That's about it, I gotta, that's all I got. Um, the reactions I received were kinda, it was kinda dull at first, cause I was in the C building and I was coming during passing period, so at first it was like really hectic, um, but we were able to get a small audience and they did listen for the most part. Um, two people w actually knew who I was before I said I was from Hidden Figure, you know, and Katherine Johnson, so I was happy about that. Uh, my reactions were actually pretty good. I had a lot of people come up to me and talk to me, and it was pretty cool to just uh, give out information about my character. So. Earlier in the U building, um, some of the reactions were just kind of confused at first, but in here, it was more like head bobbing, like with the song and smiles. Um, also for me in the U, um, it was a few people um, that kind of knew who we were, but for the most part, a lot of people didn't, and it was kind of, you know, awkward because it's like all of my friends was in there, kind of like, and just walking by, looking at me, and, you know, yeah. Um, most of the reactions we got were pretty good. The biggest reaction we got was from Adrian, and she was like our biggest encouragement in this, and she stayed on us. She cracked the whip on us. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, a lot of people actually didn't know who Misty Copeland was, so I was able to explain what I was doing and things like that. So it was really just a um, informative activity for me. That is absolutely awesome. Um, I just need to give a bit of a background because I know this is being uh, filmed to go on YouTube. The students uh, scattered to different buildings and when uh, their peers were coming out, they would, uh, they would talk about like their characters. They would introduce themselves. So they were somewhere in the C building, somewhere in the U building, somewhere in, in different parts of Moraine Valley. So hearing about the different reactions was actually, is actually really interesting. Now I want to ask you the last question. How has this figure influenced you in life today? And I'll repeat again. How has this figure influenced you in life today? Um, Barack being the first uh, African-American president influenced me every day. Like, he made it cool to be in the politics. He made it cool to be on the honors and, and still be like a a black man like it's not too many black figures we have that's outside of um, entertainers or athletes so him being a politician was just was different for me um, well playing Katherine Johnson influenced me in a way um, in a very positive way I really appreciated the fact that she was a woman who was able to withstand any prejudice or anything that came in between, you know, in her way. Um, at black women, period, we all experience a lot of doubt. Um, people don't really, you know what I mean, believe that you can do that. But besides all of that, Tara not Taraji, I'm sorry, <laughs> Catherine was able to, to just break down those barriers and able to reach her goals successfully and stay focused regardless of anything that came in her way. And uh, like I said, I see some things like that in myself, so I was able to translate you know, that to a personal thing. So that's how it influenced me. Uh, James Baldwin influenced me by seeing that <coughs> you could be comfortable by being open with yourself mm -hmm. and also allowing yourself to use your pain and struggles in a positive way instead of like, you know, negative actions. He took that and wrote in his mini essays and, you know, poetry and plays that uh, he produced. And so also, um, he's also very strong-minded and uh, he always stood up for what he believed in, so. Being one of the Supremes have, has influenced me to just break out of my shell kind of, even though I was like, you know, one of the side singers with Diana. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a great opportunity. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> playing Diana Ross with one of the, with the Supremes, um, it influenced me as far as singing, you know, in little groups and church choirs. Um, you know, don't be afraid to put your foot forward and, you know, go on as a black woman, you know, and show the front. Um, being a part of the Supremes, it, it serves as like an inspiration to me because it lets me know that black women, they can go and like pursue their goals and it was just an overall good experience for me. So. Well, I feel as if a lot of us have this mindset that you have to start early to do something that you really want. You have to kind of be raised up to do that. And with Misty Copeland, she started when she was 13, which is actually later to become a dancer, especially if you want to be as prominent as she is right now. So I was basically just influenced to work hard for whatever I want to do and whatever I believe in, because I am that person that says, oh, well, it's too late or it's, you know, I should have started early. But with her, she um, exemplified the fact that hard work can get you there. Thank you so much, all of you. It's great hearing about your experiences and your responses working on this important project. Now what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna have three interactive activities with our audience, so everybody please stay. So, I would like for you to think about this. They have spoken about their different roles and their thoughts about playing these different roles. 
And what I would like for you to do is this. Grab somebody in the audience, and for the next two minutes, I would like for you to select one or two of the historical figures here. They have already spoken about what these people meant to them and how they've influenced them in their lives. Now it's your turn. How has this historical figure made a difference in your life? So one or two of the people. So can you please say once again, who are you? I am Barack Obama. I am Katherine Johnson. I am James Baldwin. We are the Supremes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Grab somebody else and speak with them for two minutes about pick one or two. And what has this historical figure, what has this historical figure meant to your life? Two minutes. Go ahead. Stop the stopwatch. Troy, <laughs> do you have extra microphones? Okay, I'm going to ask you to stop. Uh, Diana Ross, can you please? <laughs> When somebody wants to talk, can you please give uh, give them your microphone? Okay, but yeah, I, I want you. Okay, who would like to go first? Okay, awesome. Got Demetrius and the young man over here. Okay. <laughs> we are group. This is student life, everybody. How you guys doing? You guys did a fantastic job. Give it up yes. for him one more time. Yes, they Great did. job. <laughs> I'm so proud of all of our students here. So everybody, I'm Demetrius Robinson, manager of student life. <laughs> you didn't know that, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> but this right here, we over here with Student Life and Makaya and also Carmen. They both agreed about Barack Obama. They said that that's who they can more relate to uh, to this day and age. I told them the Supremes because my mom grew up listening to the Supremes. And so my mom was wanting to be Diana. She used to sing with her um, bra, whatever, what you call that, the broomstick? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> broomstick. And so I, I, I said the Supremes, and my two students right here said the, uh, Barack Obama. Awesome. Thank you so much. He wants to also go. Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name's Sam. Yeah, yeah. I definitely say Barack Obama. Um, only re one thing I say about Barack Obama, uh, he brought my cousin back. Um, he left, uh, you know, during that little war we had, and um, he almost didn't make it back. Um, they shot a rocket at his truck. Three, uh, everybody in the truck died except him. And um, that very moment, I was watching the news and. That's when Obama was like, bring the soldiers back. And I was like, this is insane. And you know, my cousin came back. And I definitely appreciate him for that. And uh, I definitely say the Supremes because uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, younger years of my life, I, my mom would just play their music, Prince, all the damn time. And I'd be like, <laughs> you know, it brought back some positive memories. Like every time, you know, Diana was on stage or something, I was watching a movie when it came out, you know. So, you know, I definitely got to go with that. They, uh, both of them had a positive influence on my life, so. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. This is really deep, more, more please, more. These historical figures, what they, they mean in your life. Oh, Ms. Richards, would you like to see?
Anyway. Oh, awesome. Hi, uh, my name is Maxine Joseph, and I'm a student employee at the Trio Student Support Services Center. Um, the person that I would say I relate more to would be James Baldwin. I believe that's his first name. Yeah, I see you. Um, he's, um, he's the person I relate the most to because writing is a really good way to express yourself, and it can be done in different forms, um, poetry, essays, and like just print. Um, electronically in this day and age like a lot of things going on snapchat Instagram Twitter so like those are all forms of writing and that's just a really good way to express yourself and girls really seem to like it so that's a that's a really good thing too okay excellent yes he represents one of the many many african-american excellence in writing and literature definitely yes Please, more from the audience, more. Hi, I'm Maddie Payne Mallory, Director of TRIO Student Support Services. At <laughs> for me, <laughs> it was um, listening to Misty Copeland, but I know all about Misty Copeland's story. My daughter's a dancer. Um, she dances all around <laughs> Chicago, but um, she really looks up to um, Misty um, and the fact that she started at 13. My daughter started at three. Um, but we, I, I can constantly go back and say, okay, well, Misty did this or Misty did that. And also Catherine, because my daughter didn't like math at first until um, she saw Hidden Figures and I told her the importance of it. And um, she has an A in math right now, so hey. So <laughs> yes, awesome. Hi, my name is Marie here. I'm the internship manager at the Job Resource Center. If you need internships, come see me. <laughs> um, but no, uh, we actually here, we talked about Barack um, Obama. We also talked about the Supreme. So Barack, the inspiration that he has on the young African-American community, my son, her nephews, cousins, uh, we talked about that. And so that was an inspiration for us. The Supremes, uh, listening to it, uh, Shanika said listening to it as she grew up, not that she was in that era, but just from <laughs> what her mom was listening to. And then myself, too, just enjoying loving Motown sound all together, going to Motown, going to see the musical, all of that. So that was really good. But I want to say about Misty Copeland, I just think the inspiration that Misty Copeland has on young, young African-American girls, um, a lot of times it's about uh, sports, it's about more entertainment. Uh, what you see on TV and you don't really get to see the dancer. Uh, so I really think that that's an inspiration for the young African-American um, students and children. I'm sorry, I just had one more thing to say about Misty. Another reason why um, I relate to or talk about Misty Copeland a lot is because African-American young girls sometimes um, have an issue with, you know, the way they're not built up, you know, like <laughs> um, their counterparts. And sometimes that's a problem, but I'm always referring to the way that Misty's body is built up. Definitely, definitely a very strong built and an, an amazing confidence. I would like to add and say all of these people are a definite inspiration as a, lit, a professor. James Baldwin has a very special place in my heart and soul. James Baldwin is just incredibly inspiring, incredibly amazing. I am so honored that about two hours ago I was teaching James Baldwin's Sonny's Blues in African American Literature, and the students, their discussions were just amazing. There was not a silent moment in the class, and we started talking about Sonny's Blues this past Thursday, and we spoke about uh, the significance of the brothers, the African-American brothers' relationship in that story, and Harlem and its significance on African-American lives. And we're gonna talk about the significance of blues in that story as well, too. So James Baldwin, definite inspiration, and so are all of you. I'm gonna move ahead now to the next question. And the next question, I also want you to talk about it in groups as well, too. And after a minute and a half, I'll ask you to share with everybody else. Okay, so you've spoken about your, the inspiration to you personally. 
I'm going to ask you, how have they made a difference in the black community, in the African American community? If you could please talk about it. So a few of you started talking about the difference they made in the African American community, but I would, we would like for, for you to uh, talk about more specifically about the African American community itself. So can you please, two more minutes, a minute and a half, two more minutes. Go ahead, please. So the time was he was so inspired by it. Just have something to give him the whole time. <laughs> All right, I'm going to open it up to the audience. I'm going to open up to the audience and and our student artists. So who would like to begin first, please? Who would like to begin? Okay. Tiana, where are you? Tiana? Oh, okay. Tiana, Demetrius's group wants to participate. Let's give it up to that young man that's walking out. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. With Sam. All right. <laughs> um, we chose Barack. Um, he made a difference in the black community by um, making everyone proud and then encouraging younger African Americans to vote because nobody was really voting, like young people. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Right. That is absolutely awesome. More more reactions from the audience. Yes. Okay. Katherine Johnson. Hello. So um, the influence that I feel like Katherine has made within the black community and society period is, well, like, like she said a little bit earlier, people aren't normally into or all that favorable of mathematics or science or anything to that <laughs> nature, really. Me, myself, being like a more liberal person, you know, I'm not really into those subjects, but um, fortunately, through Catherine's work and like watching people being exposed to hidden figures and everything, I feel like she um, helped our influence our community by implementing those subjects out there and making them more popular, more, you know, bringing more awareness to them, letting, you know, letting people know you, can, you don't have to be afraid of those numbers, you could just tackle them, you know what I mean? And then through her works later, like recently, she has implemented so many STEM programs within like different schools and different communities, opening up those doors for African American students to learn more about those technology and engineering subjects that will, you know, get them a little bit further in life that they may not have knew about so that was a good big influence that is amazing <laughs> wow 
More, please. More. How have these amazing people influenced the African American community? Okay, Christian. I'm sorry, I like standing. Um, I enjoyed everybody who spoke. Um, the person I want to talk about is Barack Obama. For one, he's the one I'm most familiar with, and Diana Ross, obviously. But um, Barack Obama, I think he, what he did for the African American community is he gave us, especially as a black male, he gave me hope um, in times where I feel like in certain situations we lose and as a, as, a, um, as a culture, it seems like it. But when Barack Obama became president, it's like, yo, we at the top now, you know what I mean? So um, that's, just, that's just how I felt. And now it gives the, 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 um, the African-American children in those impoverished po neighborhoods, like, yo, we, we in a White House, what can't we do at this point? So I think for me, he gave me hope, like, even when I was going to class the next day, man, I, I got to study. This guy just became president. He didn't become president just getting by. So he gave us hope. He gave me hope. Um, to try my best and like nothing's impossible. So um, I think Barack Obama, he really made a major impact on uh, the African American community as a whole and forever. Thank you so much, Christian. Okay, I, I just wanna add uh, this past November when I went to the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. I stopped by for about 15 to 20 minutes in front of the segment, uh, the exhibit on James Baldwin, and I was incredibly touched by what he had to say. And for one of the videos, he was speaking to a group of African-American um, teenagers, and he was telling them something along the lines of, one day there will be an African-American president. And they're like, no. No, we cannot imagine it. And this must have been somewhere in the 60s and 70s. So Christian, hearing you say that really makes me connect with what you're saying and what James Baldwin had predicted some a long time ago. There is indeed always hope. Okay, now I'm going to move ahead uh, to the last question, which is, can you please tell us about other prominent African-American historical figures that have made a difference in the world. Your thoughts, who do you think are other really important African-American figures that have made a tremendous difference? A minute and a half, speak amongst yourselves and then please share your responses. And you two can also participate. Is the ending, but I have some. I, I hear you. Okay. Sorry. Usually the audience is not. Okay, I'm going to ask you for your thoughts. Great. African American figures that have made a prominent difference in the world. And Demetrius's team. <laughs> oh, and Dia and Diana. Hello. Okay. Um, I just want to say, because a, a lot of students may not know, that um, our past president of Moraine Valley Community College and our current president of Moraine Valley are African American people. So I hope you guys know that. So they have made a very tremendous um, effort in the growth of the uni or I'm going to say the university uh, <laughs> of the college. Feels like it. <laughs> um, so. If you guys do not know that, you know, go check out uh, Crawley Hall that is actually named after Dr. Crawley, who was our past president of our college, who was how many years? 21 years. 21 years. Okay. 
Okay, awesome. I would say um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, Bill Russell, even to not today, LeBron James. I'm a huge basketball fa fan, uh, huge, at, you know, uh, as far as basketball, sports, um, and just the influence that they've had on not only is it sports, but actually even going into politics and, and talking about what's right, what's wrong, and not holding back and not feeling that because I'm an athlete, I can't speak on these matters. Um, you can speak on those matters as an athlete, and you should speak on those matters as an athlete. If it affects you, if it affects your community, then by all means do that. So. Thank you. Yes. Hey, Dimitris' group. I went with uh, Chance the Rapper. Yeah. He's doing a lot for Chicago yeah. as of now. And then before he got famous, he was doing a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure the young folk know about him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, since he went with the Chicago, I would like to say the first black mayor of Chicago, uh, Hale Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, that ma made uh, people's influence for even for President Barack Obama because he was our first black mayor, so I say here in Washington. Okay. And Diana Ross. Uh, <laughs> um, I say Madam C.J. Walker, um, as far as the <laughs> coming up with um, hair products for us um, black women, I love it. You know, I love doing hair. I love playing and experimenting with my hair. You know, and I think she is a big person as far as from my aspect. Anybody else? Oh, more. Yes. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm actually Joseph again. Um, the person that I would say has influenced my life is actually a Nigerian. Um, he was one of the people that pioneered um, independence from colonial rule from Britain for Nigeria, and his name is Dr. Namdi Azikwe. And I mean, like, I know we're talking about like African Americans, but like, he's like one of the black men that has like really influenced my life and has made me like be able to express my views on politics and things like that. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. I would like to thank all of you for your amazing participation and for your liveliness. You are one awesome audience. So a round of applause to you. And I would like to thank the incredibly talented students here. Round of applause for them, please. Thank you, Imani. Can you guys give Imani a round of applause again, please? I hope that everyone learned some new and valuable information that you can take with you every day once you leave here. I would like to give one more round of applause for Black Student Association. They have worked extremely hard, tirelessly rehearsing with myself and with Adrian and MSA. And not only did they participate in this event, they were instrumental in planning this event as well. So I really do thank you guys. We appreciate all your hard work and um, thank you again. <laughs>